Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be taking a look at restoring this vintage G.I. Joe Sky Striker or if you're in the UK it will be the Action Force Sky Striker. Now this is a vehicle I'd never owned before and I have to say a massive thank you to Omar Khan who very kindly gave me a big box of uh, his old childhood G.I. Joe bits as a donation. He said that he no longer had a connection with them and he thought it would be a fun project for me to try and restore as much of it as I could and it's certainly going to be quite an interesting challenge because it's a toy I've never had and I always like working on toys that I've never had before because I tend to learn things as I go along and work out what needs to be fixed and what can be fixed. Now the main problem on this really is it is absolutely filthy. It's obviously been stored in a loft for a very long time and uh, generally when you store things in lofts they end up looking like this. You can see there's a sort of sheen of dirt and grime all over the top of it. The underside is remarkably clean because I'm guessing this was stored this way up and uh, uh, so it still needs a good clean but not quite as bad as the top part of it. And there's there's a few broken areas which I hope to fix, the main one being the cockpit. Now I've seen quite a lot of people say that this is a very common area to break. Luckily I have both pieces of the brake so I'm certainly going to look into seeing whether that can be fixed. At the moment I'm not sure because it's a very thin bit of plastic and some very awkward areas uh, and this looks like it has been glued before. There's the remnants of glue on this uh, back hinge section but we'll certainly give it a go. Uh, the other area that I want to cover is these uh, rear tail fins. Now both of the fins that came uh, with Omar's Sky Striker are in great condition. You can see they have all of the clips on the bottom. So I especially picked up one where the clips are broken and I've actually been working on this and I've already made a replacement here but I'll show you how to do that later on in this video. Uh, but I think uh, being able to fix that is something that a lot of people will be very pleased to see. The other issues on this are sort of lots of cosmetic things, mainly dirt. You can see here is the cockpit which is filthy. I just give it a quick rub with a tissue and you can see that's uh, sort of cleaned off quite a nice area there but uh, it's really really dirty. Uh, and then the, the pilot Ace again his o-ring has snapped but there are all the pieces for him so he's going to get a good clean up. And it looks like Omar has done a similar thing to uh, what I did when I was a child that if bits of the toy were a little bit loose and a bit wobbly I would stick them in with blue tack. So there's quite a lot of sort of the remnants of blue tack on this toy and that's what we're going to remove first. I want to remove that before we wash it because uh, I just think it would be easier to do. So let's get on and remove the blue tack and then we can give this whole toy a good clean and start fixing it up. If we remove these top panels here you can see uh, some of the areas I mean that have the blue tack on them. Now I'm calling this blue tack because that's what I would have called it as a child. This is actually white uh, sort of uh, tacky uh, putty type stuff. The things that you use to hold posters up with uh, and it's just sort of been stuck in various areas to hold these panels on. Let's take off the other panel and we'll see what that one looks like. Well that one doesn't have any in it so it's just this first panel here. I guess this must have been a loose panel and then there's a bit of tubing here that it looks like has been stuck in as well. I think that might just be stuck in with glue. We'll give it a pull and see if it comes off. Oh yeah, that has been stuck in so I might have to get a knife on that. But let's deal with the blue tack first. And the way I do that is I've actually been cleaning up a lot of the other toys that I was sent in this uh, donation and this is the blue tack I've saved off it. And all you do is loosen it up a little bit. I've got a pair of tweezers here. So I get those in. You can sort of work your way into it a bit because it still seems to have some softness to it. It's not sort of gone off and gone uh, sort of rock solid. If you loosen it up a bit like that you then take the lump of the old blue tack and push it into it and you can start to remove it and it will sort of stick into that and then you get a larger and larger lump of this blue tack to help sort of remove the other bits. It's a really boring job and I hate doing it but it is what I did as a child as well. Putting blue tack everywhere you can see it's all starting to come out now. The tweezers just help to sort of enable you to sort of loosen it from the surface. And then if we stick the blue tack in again, it will start to remove. And then a bit of hot soapy water should get the rest of that out. But it's a good way of getting it out of all the sort of nooks and crannies, of pushing another piece of blue tack into it just to uh, loosen it. There you go, that's that for that already. But I did see there's also some right in a really awkward place in the cockpit where the uh, cockpit sort of hinge is broken. There's some jammed right in there. So that's going to be a very awkward place to get up. But I'll do that off camera because uh, as you can see the camera's getting in the way. But it'll be the same process using the tweezer just to sort of loosen it up a bit. And then uh, we'll get that all cleaned out. And uh, then we can start cleaning it properly. 
to remove this stuck in tube I'm just going to use a scalpel to carefully sort of cut the glue see if I can break it a bit not quite sure what glue this is I reckon with a bit of uh, sort of gentle scoring on one side of it we should be able to cut this tube out and then uh, reuse it on whatever figure it's supposed to go on it is coming out just a little bit awkward let's swap over and do this other side There we go, that's the tube out. There's a little bit left in the corner which I'm going to use a knife again just to sort of cut that out but at least that tube is free and we can, uh, yeah I think if we just tidy up the end of that that will be uh, good enough to use on another figure. Looks like it's just been stuck in to add a bit of extra play value I guess so you can uh, sort of do refueling something like that. Now normally with a toy like this I would try and take it apart to clean it uh, because there's a lot of sort of intricate areas but this toy uh, is very complicated. There's a mechanism that opens the wings that obviously works on this one and also there's a lot of stickers that go across the join where you've got the two sections, the top and bottom sections of the vehicle joined together. Uh, there's stickers that go across it and I would have to cut those uh, and I don't really want to do that because I think I can sort of work my way around it and clean this vehicle as it is. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit longer because there's so many areas so it's going to be a case of making up a sort of mixture of hot soapy water and then using a cloth and a toothbrush to carefully wash all of the areas. I don't want to get too much water inside this so I'm going to do it sort of all on the surface. Clean all of that off and then once it's all clean you can see there are marks where uh, other bits of toys have sort of rubbed together on it so there's little black marks here especially where the uh, rear tail fins are and also where this uh, mechanism rubs on here. Uh, so we use a bit of lighter fluid to clean, clean all of those up but I think the initial thing to do is just to use some hot soapy water and clean as much of this sort of loft dirt off it as possible. So uh, let's get it all clean and then we can start tidying up some of the smaller sort of marks uh, like these little scuff marks. After a good wash it's really made quite a difference to the sky strike it's starting to look really quite lovely most of the marks have come off but you can see there are still a few little marks here these are sort of where uh, plastic has rubbed on top of plastic or maybe the paint from another toy has rubbed now those bits won't come off with the hot soapy water so I'm just going to be using some lighter fluid this is uh, stuff you can pick up at most news agents so I'm going to uh, just put a tiny amount onto a bit of kitchen towel and if we rub those onto the marks 
you can see they come off really quite easily. So there's quite a few of these just little marks all over the ship, especially along the fronts of the wings where they've uh, sort of bashed against other things and some of the bits around the back here. So I'm just going to do a sort of another pass on this vehicle and remove the last few sort of bits of dirt and then we can get on with fixing some of the other parts of it. One of the common areas that I've seen broken on these Sky Strikers is these rear tail fins. Uh, the tail fins come with four little clips on the bottom that clip into uh, a hole on the back of the Sky Striker, and these clips generally seem to snap off. Now this is a fin where none of the clips have snapped off, so you can see you have a clips pointing left and right, uh, but this is really how they tend to look. The clips snap off and then the tail fin doesn't stay in place. Uh, but I've sort of been working a way that we can uh, repair those, and you can see here this is my test go at the front, and I've made a new little replacement clip that does seem to work really well. So we're going to do the same on these back two, so that this tail fin should clip nicely back onto the Sky Striker. And the way that's done is actually using a CD case. You can see here this is a CD single case uh, that I've got in my sort of spares pot because I use this sort of plastic for other things. And if we look at the edge of it you can see there are nice sort of little uh, L-shaped lips and that's what we're going to use to recreate the clip that I've done here. It's a fairly straightforward job. It just takes a little bit of sort of cutting using a pair of plastic nippers and then we need to drill some holes and sort of make a little bit of a tidy up on this fin and we can get something that works really nicely. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make the clip. So I have here my plastic plastic nippers and we are going to just cut out a small portion of the, the sort of side part of uh, this case. You can see here there is a nice lip and that is what we're going to use. So I've got the plastic nippers here, just going to carefully sort of cut into that. This plastic is really nice and easy to work with which is why I like sort of dealing with it. And I'm cut off a larger amount than I need and uh, then we can sort of break that out like so. And here is the basis for our clip. And that was just a case of sort of whittling it down. So I'm going to cut the top section off. And you can see immediately we're starting to get something that is going to look like the uh, sort of old clip that has broken off. All you've got to do is really copy the one that you've got there and trim it down until we have something that's the right shape. So again, just a little bit of uh, cutting like so. It does sort of fire the plastic everywhere, but that's not such a problem just make something that looks the part. It's got to be the right width. That's the real thing that you're worrying about at this instance. So you can see that it's still slightly too wide. I'm just going to trim a little bit more off it. That's why plastic nippers are great to deal with this sort of stuff because you can easily cut the plastic. And there we go. We have something that is going to look the part. So now we can prep the uh, broken part of the tail fin and make a little hole that we can slot that into. On this tail fin where it has snapped you can see it's not left a very sort of neat finish so we're going to file these two pieces down. I've just got a small needle file here. I'm actually going to do one at a time just so you can see the, the way that I do it. So we've got the file and I'm just going to gently file away the remains of the old clip until we've got a sort of nice flat surface. And there we go, I think that should be good enough. You can see it's now filed quite flat. If we compare it to the bit that I haven't filed, the one that snapped off, uh, you can see that's a nice flush surface there. Now we can get to drilling a few little holes there to make a little slot that we can insert this new tab. I have a pin vise here and we're going to use that to drill some holes where the old tab was. Uh, we, and the reason we drill holes is because it's easier to do that than sort of try and cut this out with a Dremel or something like that. So if I drill three holes in a row I can then use my plastic nippers and a small file to sort of enlarge that to make a little slot that we can drop in the plastic tab. So first thing to do is just drill some holes. I'm going to drill one at either end and then one in the middle and they only need to go in. You can see there's not a great deal of plastic left on this fin so they've only got to go in sort of two or three millimetres, maybe three at the most so you don't sort of end up coming through the side of the fin. So just go slowly and uh, take your time. As 
you can see there's the first hole done so I'm going to move on to the far side and drill a hole there and then we'll do the one in the middle Now I can drill the final hole in the middle. You can see there is the two on either side. The middle one is probably the most awkward one to do because you don't want to slip into the holes on either side. So just again, go slow and steady and it can be done. And then once we've got that done, we can start shaping the slot that the uh, new plastic clip can fit into. And there we have the three holes in a row, so we can now sort of shape that into a little uh, slot that we can drop that piece of plastic in. I'm just going to do that with a pair of plastic nippers and a little file. Just got to sort of remove those middle pieces of plastic. Small knife or something would do the job as well. But if I can just sort of take those pieces out and then uh, get a file in there, we can sort of shape that a bit more into a, a little groove. So there's the final slot and we can just do a little test fit of the uh, piece of plastic that I've cut out of the CD case. You can see that's not a bad fit, it's actually a little bit too tall so I'm just going to cut off a small part of the bottom section and we'll slot that in. And there you go, that's actually looking like a reasonable replacement at the moment. I want to check that it's the same sort of level as these original clips. Uh, because I have an original one here, I can actually use that as a guide just to make sure that it, it looks like it is the same level. I think that is going to be about right. Now again, these clips all go in, in one order. So you can see here we've got to, that one's pointing down, then up, and then down, then up. So down, up, down, up. So that means this one does have to be pointing down if I'm holding the pin that way around. And that, that should be fine. Now for gluing this in you can use super glue or something like that but I'm actually going to be using plastic weld because I find that works particularly well. This sort of harder plastic uh, is great to use with plastic weld because it does dissolve it and sort of makes it stick really firmly and it's the same sort of plastic used in the CD case I have here so I think that's what I will use. So we'll get that out and we'll get this glued in and we can do a little test fit on the vehicle and see how well it works. This is the plastic weld I'm using. I picked this up from a local model shop uh, and it's great for this sort of plastic as I say because it does sort of melt it and it gives you a bond that's supposedly as good as the original sort of bond of plastic on plastic. Uh, and it's a little bit uh, nasty to use and evaporates very quickly. So use a brush or, or something like that to get it onto uh, whatever you're gluing and uh, just it uses capillary action more than anything to sort of soak in and move around. So you don't need to do anything particularly to it. Just sort of drop this on and it will drop into uh, the sort of little joins around and that will be enough to sort of soften the plastic and join it together. We do that all the way around and I've found that it's best to sort of let this set for a good hour or so because uh, it takes a little while to evaporate from the plastic but you'll get a really strong bond that should be, as I say, hopefully as good as new. If you have any gaps that you want to fill, you can always use some of the shavings that uh, come off when you're drilling the holes. You can push those in and it will melt and you can use that to sort of fill any little holes you have. But I think that today is a very nice fit. So we're just going to let that set and then we can do a test fit onto the vehicle. The fin is now ready to test fit, so let's just push it in and see what happens. I'm going to be extra careful pushing this in because I don't want to snap any of these new ones off. And I'm also only going to do uh, the two new uh, pegs that I've put here and not do that fourth one because I think it should clip in place with just three. And uh, not having the fourth one means that we can wiggle it a bit more to get it out as well because I do want this to be removable. There's no point in making something if you can't remove it in. So let's carefully drop this one in place, give it a bit of a push and see if it clips down. And there you go, that does clip nicely in place and it looks really quite firm. If I just rotate that one, you can see that is pretty firmly in place. Let's see if we can remove it without breaking those pegs. So I'm going to sort of carefully push this down and unhook it. And there you go, you can see that's uh, removed. So that's uh, pretty good. It's nice and firm. I think if I was to put that fourth little clip on, it would just be too firmly in place and you'd never get it undone because although these are quite sort of solidly in place, they're still going to be a bit weaker than the originals. But uh, there you go, that is a good uh, fix for these rear tail fins on the Sky Striker. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. And that's where we're going to leave this restoration for the moment. I'm really pleased that uh, the Sky Striker is starting to look quite nice again. Uh, giving a vehicle a good clean always makes it a lot 
nicer to look at and this one was really quite dirty so the cleaning has made a massive difference to it and being able to work out a fix on those tail fins that's something that I've been trying to think of for a little while how I would do that and it's uh, worked out really well just using bits of a CD case gives you a really quite nice strong clip there so that's a, a great way of fixing them. Now I do need to say a massive thank you to Omar Khan who very kindly donated this along with a load of other GI Joe stuff which I hope to work on in the future and I also want to give a mention to eterniacollectibles.co.uk which is a place where I managed to purchase quite a few of the missing parts for this vehicle uh, that I'd not checked out their website before and they got a few great items for the Sky Striker so I was able to buy things like the cockpit and this uh, broken tail fin and I thought their prices were pretty reasonable so I would uh, suggest uh, going to check those out just because they might have some parts that you need for some of your restorations and as I say there will be a part two for this video so uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video so I hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.